Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles and on this episode we're doing a top 10. Topic of the top 10, top 10 potential Royal Rumble surprises for 2024. And now this is going to be formatted just a bit differently since there is a men's Royal Rumble and a women's Royal Rumble. Instead of doing a top 10, it's actually going to be two top fives, which when you put them together equals 10. With that being said, after choosing by coin flip, the men go first. Number five for the men's Royal Rumble, Matt Cardona, a.k.a. Zack Ryder. While Zack Ryder is doing better on the indies or Matt Cardona than he did during his WWE run and making tons of money and probably the highest paid indie wrestler in the world right now, both the WWE and him could benefit from an appearance. Even if it's just a one-off nostalgia buzz, having him appear in the Royal Rumble, bringing in somebody that casual fans know and have loved in the past and may have not remembered for the past few years, and then also bringing in somebody that your loyal independent wrestling fans, people that watch Game Changer Wrestling, knowing love you kind of get that buzz going and with Cardona one of the most intelligent wrestlers there is he can market that one appearance so well even if it's not for a full-on WWE return his ability to market that and make that something special would just be fantastic now go from that to number five on our women's side this one's pretty much a no-brainer it's almost certainly going to happen especially after seeing the results of TNA's Hard to Kill pay-per-view, which is a great show. TNA is back. Trinity, a.k.a. Naomi, coming back in the Royal Rum. Like I said, this is pretty much a no-brainer. It's one of those rumors that's basically going to happen. This is kind of like CM Punk in the, the first dance when he first came back to AEW. Without fully out and out saying it, they're saying this is going to happen. She gave a goodbye speech basically at the pay-per-view, was emotional there. I can see this, and like we've seen in TNA and in her WWE run, any wrestling company that could add Naomi to their roster, or Trinity, whichever you'd like to call her, is going to have one of the best female wrestlers in the world in the company. She is so athletically gifted and has such a great charisma and such a great personality that she connects with so many people on so many different levels. I'd absolutely love to see her return. Absolutely love to see it here. I think it's definitely going to happen, and I'm going to be happy when it does. Now go from that, our number four on the men's side. We say it's number four. But really, it's number 10, Sean Spears, a.k.a. Ty Dillinger. Again, this may end up just being a one-off, kind of, like I said, with Cardona, a nostalgia pop appearance. But I think it could be much more. Sean Spears is one of the most critically underused wrestlers in the last decade. And it's strange because he connects with fans. Fans love him. He's a great wrestler. I don't know where the disconnect between here's this guy that can be pushed to them not pushing him. I often kind of wonder, is it maybe he's too nice and he's too willing to say yes to everything and does some things that are detrimental to his own career to help other people's careers? Maybe that's it. I don't know, though, but... It would be fun to see him here. I think it'd be awesome to bring him back into the fold. I'd love to see it happen, hence why it's on my list. We'll go from that, our number four on the women's side. Julia debuting in the Rumble. As I'm recording this today, i just seen reports that AEW is not interested in Julia, which I don't know how any wrestling company that has women's wrestling, much like I said with Naomi, would not be interested in bringing Julia in. I mean, to me, it's a no-brainer. She's an absolutely amazing wrestler. You could make the argument maybe that her English isn't the greatest, but who really cares? Uh, Sid Vicious didn't have the greatest English, and he was a multiple-time world champion. If you're worried about that, pair her with a mouthpiece. Pair her with an MVP or... Paul Heyman, hell, as soon as the bloodline's up, he's going to need to do something. This would be the kind of person that would be perfect for Paul Heyman. She's such a great wrestler, and, and I haven't seen every stardom show, but I have seen her matches, and I've seen several of them. I've seen enough to form an opinion that she's pretty much one of the top stars in women's wrestling. This would be a great spot for her. I'd love to see her in the WWE. I'd love to see what they could do with her. I think it'd be a perfect place for her. I'm going from that on number three, on the men's side. A guy that's had a huge resurgence, 
not in wrestling, but on YouTube, and that's Maven. If you haven't subscribed to Maven's YouTube channel or you're not seeing the videos he puts out, he's putting out some really engaging, interesting, fun videos, and you start to remember why he won the initial Tough Enough, why he connected with the crowd so much. He's just a charismatic guy and an intelligent guy. And whoever's running his YouTube, whether it be him himself or he has a team with him, they are pure geniuses because he has hit on something and he has become a huge star in the YouTube wrestling world in that lane. I think, again, even if this is a one-time appearance, which it probably would be, I believe, on one of his videos, he said he's too injured or has too much pain to do a full-time run. But a one-time appearance, that would be fun. Bring him back into the WWE fold, have him sign a Legends agreement, you know, make some wrestling toys of him, make some video game appearances. I think we're in the generation of... Adults that would have been kids when Maven had his run in the early 2000s that would love to see him back that are now watching with their kids and they could say, hey, that's one of the guys I used to cheer back in the day. The other benefit is one of Maven's big career highlights was eliminating The Undertaker in the Royal Rumble. So what a full circle moment to bring Maven back in a, a Royal Rumble. I think it would be a great spot again. Just another great appearance, one of those things that makes the fans happy. I'll go from that, our number three on the woman's side. This is a wrestler that signed to WWE already, but kind of has disappeared over the last couple months. That's Jade Cargill. If you want to make a splash, and you want to bring her out in probably one of the biggest ways possible, other than potentially the Raw after Mania, you bring her out in the Royal Rumble, you have her go on a, a Kane-esque type run where she eliminates five, six, seven wrestlers, makes it into the final four, hell, even maybe makes it into the final two. Or, if you want to go crazy, have her win it. You want to have a star-making appearance and a star-making moment? You bring Jade Cargill in here, let her dominate this, and build the rest of her WWE career off of that domination, and you're going to have a rocket strapped to her back she's gonna go right to the top i'd love to see it happen i think jade cargill is someone that's gonna be a mega huge star in the wwe and i can't wait to see what they do with her now go from that our number two on the wwe side a man that just recently became a free agent andrade whether it's andrade el idolo or Andrade Cien almost. He's been one of the best wrestlers in the world that kind of, again, much like I said with Sean Spears, but I think even more so for Andrade, he hasn't ever been really used to his full potential. I think this is a guy that you could put in the mix of being your top four or five guys. I mentioned when reviewing Collision earlier in 2023 how he may not have the best promo in English, but when you have him speaking in Spanish, he's captivating. And we're at a time where you could put subtitles on the TV and no one is going to care. They're going to read the subtitles. There's a large enough Spanish-speaking audience that a lot of them are going to understand it. They already do promos with the LWO in Spanish. So why not bring Andrade in? Why not bring him in in a prominent role? I definitely think he could slot in in that already packed main event scene with people like Cody Rhodes, CM Punk, Roman Reigns, Gunther, who's got to go up to the main event scene very soon. I think he's a perfect person to put in there because he brings something different than all of those people. Fantastic wrestler, I'd love to see his return to the WWE and hopefully get used properly for once in his career. I think it would be awesome. Now going from that, our number two on the women's side, probably the biggest free agent or hottest free agent in the world right now, Mercedes Monet, aka Sasha Banks. Now I've said with Julia, so I will say it with Sasha or Mercedes, whatever you'd like to call her. Just like with Julia, there's rumors that AEW doesn't have interest in her. There's rumors the other way that her that Sasha and WWE couldn't come to terms and aren't even close. So this may be a, a long shot, or that may just be a smoke scene. It may be false information going out to the public. Going back to what I said about Naomi at Hard to Kill, she was very obviously there supporting her friend. She was there with her other friend, Bailey. And I have a strong feeling with the change 
of culture, the change of ownership, the change of booking philosophies. She may be more inclined to go back to WWE than she was five months ago, six months ago, a year ago. I know she walked out because of frustration, but as we've seen, time does heal a lot of wounds. I'd love to see her back. If for nothing else, we need to eventually, someday, get that four horsewoman fatal four way with her, Becky, Charlotte, and Bailey all in the ring together, all going up against each other. I'd love to see it happen. Let's get her back in the fold. Bring Sasha Banks, aka Mercedes Monet, back. It'll be awesome. Now, before we get to our number ones, I do a thing here on my top tens called the best of the rest. Basically, these are things that were considered for the list, but didn't quite make it. Since we're going with the men first on the normal list for the best of the rest, we'll do women first here. First off, Camille. Camille was considered just because of her talent and her look and her raw athleticism. The reason why she didn't quite make the list for me, not that I don't want to see her have a great debut and a great spot in a company like WWE with a higher exposure. The problem is just that there's not enough people that know who Camille is for it to be any kind of a splash. I think she would be better served to have some vignettes, whether it be through NXT or WWE main roster, to bring her in and hype her up before debuting her. I don't think she would work great as a surprise, but if she does come up at the Royal Rumble, I'm going to think it's awesome either way. Now, last but not least, on the best of the rest, from the men's side, Maxwell Jacob Friedman, a.k.a. MJF. Now, there's two things that are big negatives to this, and he's almost certainly not going to be anywhere near the Royal Rumble. We've heard that the free agency of... 2024 has been something he's talked about for two years. I think that's a work. I think he's already signed an extension. And even if it wasn't, he's had some pretty significant injuries that he's taken care of. His shoulder is legitimately hurt. I believe he has a leg injury, a thigh injury possibly. And he's taking care of both of these things, which to me, even if he's a legitimate free agent, I don't think the time lines up for him to be in the Rumble, so I don't think he's going to appear there. I did consider him, though, because it would be a huge shock. It would be a crushing blow in the quote-unquote war between WWE and AEW, which it's not really a war, but more of a collecting of assets. I think he would be a huge blow for AEW to lose him, be a big get for WWE because he's MJF and he's a great wrestler. I don't think it's going to happen. That's why I didn't make the list. Now, before I get to my number one, if you think I put something too high, something too low, left somebody off the list altogether, let me know down here in the comments. While you're there, smash that like button, share the video, subscribe if you haven't. And if you see where it says join, that's how you become a channel member. Becoming a channel member definitely helps me out. With that being said, time for our number ones. The number one on the men's side of the fold. It's a new day. Yes, it is. Big E coming back. There is not one wrestling fan in the entire world that would not love to see Big E make his return at any time, anywhere. Why not at the Royal Rumble in a big stadium in basically his hometown and hearing that monstrous ovation he would get? It would just be one of the best Royal Rumble moments of all time. I don't know where he is health-wise. I haven't heard anything since probably around WrestleMania time last year. And every time I do one of my surprise predictions since his injury, he's been on the list because I'm so, I'm such a big fan of his and everybody is. Everybody loves Big E. Did I just want him to come back? Even if he comes back as a ring announcer or a, or someone that does backstage segments or a commentator, just give us Big E. Give us him somewhere. This would be the feel-good moment of all feel-good moments. It would be one of the great moments in Royal Rumble history, hence why it's on my list, hence why it's number one for the men's side. Now, last but not least, our number one for the Women's Royal Rumble. Had a big moment with Big E. We're gonna go over to a wrestler on the woman's side that he was, once was in a group with, him and Dolph Ziggler, and that's AJ Lee. I made an entire video about wanting AJ Lee to make a return, and it's for very selfish reasons. AJ Lee is probably in my top five women's wrestlers of all time. I absolutely love everything that she brought to the table, her ability, 
her scrappiness, her character work, everything she did, everything she did in her run with the WWE was just fantastic. And I think AJ kind of gets forgotten when we talk about the whole women's revolution and the importance of the four horse women and Paige and the people that have brought that along. She kind of laid the ground. She fertilized the ground for all these plants to grow and didn't really get the chance for herself to blossom into the big star. She wasn't around where it was possible for a woman to main event WrestleMania or main event a big pay-per-view. That wasn't a thing when AJ Lee was there. But because of the work of AJ Lee, it is a thing now. It can happen. Women like Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, Rhea Ripley, Ronda Rousey have main evented pay-per-views based on the groundwork that AJ Lee built. I'd love to see AJ come back and know it's not just because she's CM Punk's wife. It's because I genuinely think she's one of the best women wrestlers of all time. One of the most compelling characters of all time on the women's side of the wrestling world. I'd love to see her have that one moment. Even again, like I said with most of these, if it's a, just a one-off, I'd love to see it come full circle. Bring her back into the fold. It would be absolutely awesome. With that being said, again, hit me up down here. If you made it to the end of the video, let me know who you think is going to be a surprise in the Royal Rumble. Or someone you'd like to see as a surprise. Put it down here in the comments. With that being said, my name is George Coles, and this has been another Heel Heat Top 10.